Hello and welcome to Food Safety Fridays. My name is Simon Timpley from the International Food Safety and Quality Network. Today I'm delighted to announce 1,912 people have registered to see Mr. Popular, <laughs> Vladimir, <laughs> Vladimir Sachinsky, our very good friend, amazing, uh, engaging trainer, auditor and also speaker. And uh, we're delighted to have you today, Vlad. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Simon, and thank you all for registering in this uh, number. Now you gave me some anxious to really have a good topic, you know. And I was, uh, I was thinking, uh, like, let's have some easy Friday. <laughs> so yeah, but I think it will be very interesting. So thank you very much for this uh, this uh, number. And uh, yeah, I see that. Uh, Simon has left the room already, so okay. I've had enough. Turn... I've had enough. <laughs> you no, had enough. It's, okay. <laughs> uh, it is an easy Friday. We're all friends here. It doesn't matter how many are. Everybody's welcome, wherever you are, from all over the world. Tell us where you're joining from in the sidebar. Uh, we'll now play the sponsors' ads. We're we'll back in two minutes for the presentation. slides on there we go right i'll be back for the q a later for now uh i'll hand you over to vladimir thank you simon so once again hello and welcome i know that for some of you it's morning for some of you it's uh, afternoon etc but again thank you for, for joining us all of you food safety friends and thank you again for logging into this presentation. Of course, thank you, IFSCOEN, for giving all of us place to share and to learn about food safety. Special thank you to, 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 to Simon for being our host for this great webinar for so many years. Today, we are going to talk about internal auditors. So we are going to talk about their competencies, about their behavior models, about training, etc. So I will try to keep it short because there, there are so many of you logged in and I would expect from you to have some questions. So I will leave more time for questions and answers part and we can all enjoy in this beautiful Friday. For those of you who don't know me, uh, but practically you all know me, you know, because I'm here in the IFS Queen from 2015. Till now, we have talked about all kinds of food safety topics. And my goal 
was always to present something that you are struggling with and how I see the solutions for that from my auditing consultation training experience. I'm certified food safety expert. I have more than 10 years in food safety topics through implementation, through training, through auditing. And food safety standards are my focus, but I'm st strongly uh, uh, included in standards for quality, for environmental protection, business continuity, risk assessment, etc. I'm currently in a position of product manager for certification and trainings in food standards in certification body of Quality Austria, uh, where I'm also accredited auditor and trainer with more than 600 audits performed in different industries and more than 3,000 persons trained and even more trained through the online platforms. So my vision actually is finding a new ways to analyze risk in food safety and defining of methods that will will be used in industries across the world my strategy here is to develop and research new topics in food safety presenting them through the webinars to the trainings forums blogging publication whatever is there available for you to have some insights on what's new what is trendy because of this there is also a new thing and from the beginning of 2019 i started my own video blog called addicted to food vlog which is focused on food safety topics it is available on linkedin you can look up for me on linkedin on instagram on facebook youtube uh, it is still in developing mode it is focused more on market of southeast europe but there are translations included for uh, for all the videos you can also visit my website which is addicted to food.me so, friends, let us first start with standard requirements for internal auditors. I tried to show you what are the requirements from different standards. These are all GFSI recognized standards. And uh, you will notice when we go through all of these requirements that uh, standards are actually pretty much same regarding the requirements for the uh, auditors. But let's see in FSSC as a starting requirement, as a starting standard, where the internal auditor is defined, actually. So this is the point 0.92, this is internal audit, and it is said that organization shall plan, establish, implement, and maintain audit program. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? And also, organization shall define methods, responsibilities, planning requirements, and reporting. We shall take into consideration the importance of the process concern, changes in the food safety management system, and the results of monitoring, measurement, and previous audits. Also, organization shall define the audit criteria and scope for each audit, and shall select competent auditors, so competent auditors, and conduct the audits to ensure objectivity and impartiality of the audit process. So what is important in this case, because today we are talking about only about internal auditors, is actually what is the requirement of the standard FSSC 22000 is seeing that you need in your organization for the process of internal audit to select competent auditors and to conduct audits to ensure objectivity and the impartiality of the audit process. So just keep in head competent auditors, objectivity, impartiality. So let's go on our next requirement, on our next standard that is recognized by the GFSI. I selected this time IFS food because IFS food is always changing. We had we have version seven few days ago announced version eight. So we will expect some additional changes, but what hasn't changed in the previous years is actually are actually the requirements of the internal audits. In the IFS food version 7.5.1, internal audits are uh, defined. So here again, IFS food defined that this is knockout question. So if you uh, haven't implemented uh, actually uh this requirement this is knockout you cannot get the certificate you know so the company shall have an effective internal audit program in place we shall cover at least all the requirements of the ifs standard this is the same for all other standards but ifs is very clear about it scope and frequency of internal audit shall be determined and justified by risk assessment 
and the internal audit program shall also apply to off-site storage locations owned or rented by the company. But what actually is IFS Food saying about the internal auditors? In the point 513, they are saying the auditors shall be competent and independent from the audited department. Okay, so what we have found out that we need to have some internal auditors. What they need, they need to be competent, independent. Okay, clear. So in the FSC 22000, we find out that auditors need to be competent and need to be objective and impartial. And here, the auditors need to be competent and independent. Okay, it is pretty much similar as in FSC 22000. Okay, that's nice. So let's go um, over the ocean from, from my point of view and see the SQF. SQF is also the standard that is recognized by the, by the GFSI. And again, we have the requirement for the internal audits, in this case, also inspections. SQF is saying similar like the IFS, that this is a mandatory so your organization need to implement this process you need to have internal audits and inspections but what is said there as the uh, requirement the methods and responsibility for scheduling and conducting internal audits to verify the effectiveness of the sqf system shall be documented and implemented internal audits shall be conducted in full and at least annually the methods applied shall ensure all applicable requirements of the SQF Food Safety Code. Objective evidence is recorded to verify compliance or non-compliance. Corrective and preventive actions of deficiencies identified during the internal audits are undertaken and audit results are communicated to relevant management personnel and staff responsible for implementing and verifying corrective and preventive actions. Actually, the requirement is same in all three standards. What is said there about the internal auditors, which, which is our topic today, 2542 is saying staff conducting internal audits shall be trained and competent in internal audit procedures. Where practical, staff conducting internal audits shall be independent of the function being audited. So what we have found out from these three standards, we need competent. This is very clear in all standards. We need that they are independent from the process. And here, also mentioned in the SQF, they shall be trained and competent. And again, independent. So if we compile all the results from the requirements of the GFSI standards, GFSI recognized standards, we will find out what are the internal auditor requirements. So no matter which standard you are certifying, these are the, or implementing or having in your company, these are the requirements for your internal auditor. So your in the internal auditors need to be competent, need to be objective in their job working or the internal audit activity, they need to be trained for internal audit procedures and shall be independent from audited process or function or department, however you call it. But they need to be independent, of course, because of the, again, objective results. In order to comply with this, there is totally different guideline for auditing management systems. And this guideline can help you in really understanding how to perform internal audit. This is ISO 19011. So in the standards of the um, uh, all the certification schemes that I mentioned, you are having the information what you need to comply to have the internal auditors. And this for sure will be checked during the audit by the external auditors. But there is totally different standard who is explaining how you should perform the audit. And this standard is ISO 19011. So what is interesting here, actually, this standard is saying about uh, all audits that are performed, no matter is it external audit, is it supplier audit, or is it uh, just internal audit, you know, 
this this is the guideline how you can do it and the part of this guideline is talking about competence and evaluation of auditors where actually they are having clear parts saying how you should determine auditor competence how you should determine the personal behavior what is the important regarding the knowledge and skills uh, how you can um, uh, or what you can do to achieve auditor competence to achieve audit team leader competence etc and this guideline if you find it on the internet can really help you what is additionally here important to mention actually ifsqn together with tony developed specific training i will show you on on the last slide and this specific training is talking about internal auditors and it is based according to of course part of the iso 90011 so if you want to listen really detailed about internal audits how to plan it how to perform it how to select auditors etc then you you should for sure go on a training on the ifsqn that tony is really good in and uh, you will listen about the internal auditing process so I just wanted to mention here for you what is the ISO in, uh, 19011 and important what is ISO 19011 is saying are the principles of the auditing. So what is important when you are having the internal audit in your company? First thing is the integrity. This is the foundation of professional, uh, professionalism and you really need to keep it professional. So don't perform the internal audit like something is you know very hard to perform we don't have time for it we are not uh, paying sufficient uh, energy on it you know you need really to be professional because from this good internal audit you will get important result for the improvement of your system principle of auditing is also fair presentation so this is the obligation to report truthfully and accurately this would mean that during the internal audit if you really notice that there are some issues in your company you need to say that to the top management you need to say that the process is not working good you need to say that we do not have very good um, controls if you notice some uh, infrastructure damages you need to say to the top management these infrastructure damages are influencing our cleaning they are influencing our uh, potentially food safety and we need to build the budget on it and to invest on it also professional care this is the application of diligence and judgment in the auditing confidentiality is a very important principle of the auditing security of the information but not just the security on the information in the meaning of security uh, security of the data that you are collecting but also the information that you are getting from the people that you are interviewing you know sometimes when when you are doing the interview people or the employees will start talking about colleagues or start talking about their professional life and then you as an internal audit you need to build the confidentiality and with the interviewed person and and really you know be to secure the information that you are getting to to you know sometimes they will they will tell you some personal info and then you have to carry it with you that's it you know you don't you don't share it that, that's the confidentiality this is very important principle of the auditing of course independence this is something that is mentioned through all the requirements and when you are presenting the internal audit result to the external auditors that do that are doing the certification of your company you will have to show how you achieve the independence so this is the basis for the impartiality of the audit and objectivity of the audit conclusion this would mean that if i am the uh, uh, chief of the production i cannot audit the production processes you know i can audit maybe the purchasing processes i can maybe audit the it processes or maybe i can audit the top management processes but for sure i cannot audit the uh, production processes because this is not independence then you know i would audit my my own work and my own people 
So this is something to keep in mind, which is the very important principle of auditing. Again, an important principle of auditing is evidence-based approach. This would mean that for everything that you have seen during the internal audit, you need to, to have some uh, reproducible audit conclusion in a systematic audit process. This would mean that you will have to show some evidence and according to this evidence, your conclusion. So, for example, if you say uh, pest control, pest control uh, uh, activities are not good in the company, this is not very good conclusion because it is not evidence based. But if you say there is a lack in pest control management due to uh, noted holes in the protective nets on windows or missing rubbers under the doors or we have noticed the flying insects in the production these are the evidence and then you say okay these are my conclusions but they are evidence-based and very important thing is to have risk-based approach you know this is where the main principles of auditing and i'm afraid to say it out loud but sometimes sometimes even the external auditors lack in this risk-based approach so what it would mean an audit approach that considers risks and opportunities this would mean that if auditor during the audit noticed that there is a potential that some piece of equipment for example is broken in the in the future near future and that this piece of equipment can you know open the leakage for example for some oils or something like that into the product then auditor would say okay this could be a risk and i want you to take care of it so this is a risk based approach you know sometimes you will get the audit results that are very strict you know but then again we should answer or we should question ourselves is it a risk based maybe there is no high risk only the internal auditor or the external auditor in this case could be very strict you know and very formalistic not looking at all the points and not concluding the risk as low risk maybe so risk based could mean that this is that, that, that you will evaluate potential high risk or low risk yeah and these are main principles of the auditing if you are doing the internal auditor trainings please make sure that your internal auditors understand the main principles of auditing but let's talk a little bit about the competencies of auditors you know when you look at the competencies of the external auditors you can go to the uh, to the websites of the ifs of the uh, FSSC of the GFSI and there you can find what are the needed competencies of the auditor uh, for to audit some of these uh, standards but when we talk about competencies of the auditors in this case these are the internal auditors so we should build on some personal attributes first you know and this could be the open mindedness this is don't for uh, don't, don't think think me wrong but this is also based on iso 9 2011 only you can use it for your internal auditors so you can build on personal attributes you know you can make like very easy matrix in the excel where you list on your left side all the personnel and then you list all the personal attributes and you evaluate them for each of your auditors and you would expect from your internal auditors that they are open-minded which means that they are willing to accept some alternative ideas or points of view what this would mean this would mean that for example if person is explaining how they are doing the work and this work is uh, different than the procedure is describing but the end result is actually the same. You should be open-minded and accept these ideas saying, okay, maybe this is some deviation for the company process where we need to improve our procedures because in reality, this is not 
or the work instructions, this is not how it is done. Something is changed. So you should be open-minded in the interviewing the personnel. Of course, you should be ethical. You should be fair, sincere, honest, and discreet. So what this would mean? It would mean that if you are not sure about something, you should be honest and say, okay, I'm not sure. I'm not understanding that. And please explain me deeply or show it to me, you know. Of course, you should be tactful in dealing with people. Sometimes you would have people that are a little bit slower in explanations or sometimes they are anxious, you know, uh, some people get, get sweaty in the conversation, etc. And maybe you want to finish fast your internal audit. And then you would say, okay, you need to be tactful in dealing with people. You need to wait for their answer. You need to have... Um, uh, you need to have, you know, to give them maybe more space or maybe redefine your question if you see that person is struggling with answering your question. Of course, connected with this is that you are observant and ability to concentrate. So it would mean that you really observe what is going on, how people are working on some process. If they are doing some, uh, for example, controls, are they doing these controls in some organized way, how they are recording it, etc. Of course, you need to be perceptive in this and some ver versatile, which means that you need to adjust readily to different situations. Of course, these situations are something that um, you need to adjust it. So what this could be, for example, you want to perform your internal audit, you are going inside the production, for example, and then you have electricity power off. So what you will do? Will you stop the internal audit? Or maybe you will check how procedures are uh, handled regarding the crisis situation. So you need to adjust to the different situations. Actually, in my work, I had so many different situations. For example, I had one unannounced audit and I'm entering inside the production and let's say five minutes before I came, the electricity power was off and we didn't have the electricity for next four hours. So we didn't have the uh, possibility to see the machines. We had also some of the breakages because of the stop of the electricity, etc. So I decided to have uh to adjust to the situation and i said okay let's see how you are handling the cleaning after this situation let's see how you are handling the crisis situation let's see your procedures when you have the electricity power off etc etc so you need to be versatile of course tenacious you need to be persistent and focus on achieving objectives. So if you want to find out how some process is, uh, is done, you need to ask questions and you need to wait for the answer and maybe ask, ask some more questions and more questions just to be persistent to, to get your answer. Because sometimes when you talk with people, uh, you know, it would happen it would happen that they are not very clear in the answering and of course you need to be decisive so this means reaches timely conclusion based on logical reasoning and analysis of course self-reliant this would mean that your internal auditor acts and functions independently while interacting effectively with others and this is very important you know because uh Self-reliant means that you need to have the auditor that can think, that can understand the process, but also can interact at the same moment with different people. You know, since I have been doing this auditing for many years, I learned to uh, work together interactively with up to 12 people at the moment so i just give them some uh, some you know information you give me this procedure you answer this question you answer you give me this table etc and then but you need some exercise because of that 
this this is why I would recommend that you have a list with all your internal auditors or your potential internal auditors. And then you have on the side like personal attributes listed, these nine of them. And then you just put some mark who has all or some of these personal attributes. Because if you have all, then this is a good start for the internal auditor. But if you have some, then you can develop internal auditor trainings to build on some additional personal attributes. Additional personal attributes you can see here is that person is open to improvement. Of course, culturally sensitive. This would mean that, that this internal auditor is observant and respectful to the culture of the auditee because sometimes you will have the different cultures in the same uh, surroundings. You know, there are lots of companies where, where a lots of different cultures are working. And for example, if these cultures um, are having different uh, view on the world, different view on the work, etc., um, some then as an internal auditor, you need to be culturally sensitive. You need to understand that. You need to uh, maybe talk about it to understand it better, etc. And of course, good personal attributes would mean that you are collaborative, that you are effectively interacting with others. Of course, this would mean that you are uh, uh, interacting with others, but this wouldn't mean that you are uh, a talker and you talk too much and then you do not ask, ask questions. You talk uh, about life, about football, about uh, baseball or whatever, and then you, de you don't get nothing from this audit. So collaborative would mean that you are effectively interacting with others, but not too much, of course. Everything needs to be, um, uh, you know, adjusted to the situation. Of course, when we talk about the competence of auditors, there are not, there, uh, we cannot stop just at the personal attributes. We need to talk about the knowledge. We need to talk about the skills of the internal auditors. When you look at the external auditors, they have their own knowledge and skills built through some audits. And you can also adjust this to your situation, to your internal auditors, where you can say, okay, I will have internal auditing team. My first internal auditing team will be uh, managed, will be made from uh, several persons. And this uh, internal audit team will be lead auditors. So this is by first year. Next year, I will include some additional internal auditors, but they will be just observers during this audit. And these first internal auditors that are already approved and lead auditors can train this in the process, uh, these observers, for example. So what would be the knowledge and skills? You can build it the same way as I exp explained for the uh, personal, as I explained it for the personal attributes. You can build your table. You have the names of the person, and then you have knowledge. So knowledge could be the knowledge of the audit principles, the knowledge of the procedures that are audited. Maybe the procedure of purchasing, the procedure from for sales, procedure for management review, etc. And of course, the methods of the um, audit, knowledge of the management documentation and reference documents. So this is very important to uh, have the internal auditors who understands the documentation, who understand how uh, referencing of documents is done. If you have a person who just came to the company who does not have any experience, then this person would have difficulties in understanding the management documentation. And of course, the knowing of the business and the management practices, you know, food safety management practices. So you need to have the uh, internal auditors who have this knowledge. But how you will build on this knowledge? For example, you can say internal auditors can be the employees that are uh, employees in this company for at least three years. So this is that these employees understand the management documentation, they should understand the business and management practices, and this is a good basic to develop your auditor, internal auditor. You know, he will have some knowledge, for example. 
Of course, knowledge of the applicable legal and contractual re uh, requirements. Uh, sometimes this is very difficult because you will have the employees from different departments, so maybe they will understand the legal requirements for their own work, but they cannot understand maybe the legal requirements for all, um, uh, for the whole company or some other processes. And then you will need to build this knowledge through some training. And of course, sector specific knowledge, this is actually something that you are building uh, for your internal auditors through your training. Very important skills in audit performing is actually observation. So you need really to have auditor who is uh, very good in the, in the observation who can notice the things, you know, the small things. There is a, there is a hole, there is a tape uh, uh, on the production line, uh, there is a missing document, there is missing recording, etc. Of course, the person need to perform good interviewing, sampling, of course, and need to be the good listener, you know, because all of the auditors need to be a good listeners, you know. Listening doesn't mean always that we uh are um uh you know thinking about what person is saying sometimes you uh, per, uh, people look like they are listening but actually they are looking through us but as an auditor you really need to listen what your interviewed person is saying because this could build your evidence and we said one main principle is evidence based and very important skills for the auditor is recording this this could seem funny to you the recording but uh, actually it is very important because if you are an auditor and you need to record some evidences you know during the whole day of auditing or two days auditing you will record so many things and for you it would be important later when you are writing the report or you are writing the non-conformities that you come back to your records and then you look there and say, okay, oh my God, I, I have recorded here something, but what is that? What, what was the evidence, etc." So you need to uh, build your skills in, uh, of course, recording. And sometimes for the internal auditors, you can define how recording will look like. And you can say, we want you in the checklist for the internal audit always to mark the nonconformity with some plus or maybe with a signature or maybe with some small uh, h letter like hint or something like that you know and this is very important for the later uh, understanding of the audit results of course from this evidence that are collected but let's talk a little bit about your internal auditors in your company i will go fast through this and we will continue through the questions answering them so who are actually internal auditors? You need to define your audit team, but this will highly depend on the company size. You know, if you're a small company, you have five employees. So who will be the auditor? You know, because these five employees actually understand all the processes in the company. If you're a large company, you have thousands of employees, then you will really easily build your audit team. For example, I worked in a company who had 10,000 employees and we have built a, a audit team that is uh, made from 45 audit teams actually you know and every audit team was responsible for a different group of products so you can do that of course if you have 10,000 of people but what in case that you have five employees how how you will uh, define who is the internal auditor. In many cases, we say it's a quality manager, it's a food safety manager, he's the internal auditor, but actually food safety manager in this case is doing everything. So we are not fulfilling the independence. So what we can do in this case, we can maybe select some external person. Maybe we can engage external person to perform the internal audit for us. You know, we just engage someone who has the experience. Very easy solution. Or there is even a crazier solution. If you are, for example, technologist in a small company and you have your colleague in, in some other company who is also a food technologist, 
and you you say to your colleague hey colleague are you an internal audit in your company yes i am and you say okay i'm an internal auditor in my company let's exchange you be the internal auditor in my company i will be the internal auditor in your company only you in this case will have to define the um uh, you will have to define how you will protect the data of course but it is very easy solution it could be very cheap solution you know you just agree on doing it like that if you for example have a lots of people then you can say for example uh, uh, you can choose one person from each department. You can choose different level of organizational chart. Uh, and of course, there is no limited number of internal auditors. Each year you can train five, ten new auditors. It would be easier for you in the upcoming years then to have independence what you need. External persons as internal auditors, why not? Yeah, only you need that these persons are also competent and that, that you can uh, prove their competencies. And of course, persons with specific behavior is someone that you will choose from your um, from your company. So this would be the persons that are observant, that have the skills, etc. And you can uh, evaluate it by making some, for example, metrics. You list down your employees and then you uh, just put which skills do all of these uh, personal have and then you select them yeah important also to develop for the internal auditors is knowledge training and experience and you can define internally you can say at least one year of experience is important to have an auditor or you can say for all new internal auditors they need to have at least two years experience as observers during the internal audits and after that, they will be approved as leading internal auditors. You will need to think about what is the specific basic knowledge. Do they need some specific school to be the internal auditors? Maybe you decide that only, uh, only people who are technologists, that they are uh, internal auditors. Maybe you decide like that, or only people from laboratory, they are uh, internal auditors, etc. And of course, you need to separate time and budget finance for the training, external training, but also internal trainings and time for training your internal auditors. And before we continue to questions and answers, I will separate the time for you to talk about it. Uh, you need to think about also the practical internal auditor training for food operators this is the training that is uh coming in the april i think you already got the information through your emails the instructor is tony connor he has really lots of experience and i think this is the training that you will really enjoy it lasts for uh, four hours and you get really detailed practical knowledge how to perform your internal audit for food operations okay yeah that's it for um today's uh, presentation and we can uh continue maybe with some questions and answers yeah, i'm just gonna put uh thanks for mentioning that i didn't know he was going to mention that but that's the uh sorry it's not meant to be in there uh yeah so that's the uh training next tuesday actually with tony connor uh so it's uh, 9 a.m. EST uh, for four hours or 2 p.m. UK time. It's $97. So if you go to that link, you'll see it on the website. But we will be sending out another email on Monday. So, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, okay, some questions. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go see. through questions. Yeah, so first one. Um, from Abayomi, what are the main internal audit competencies needed and how can new internal auditors develop these required skills? As I said, first step is actually to list down all the potential people that uh, could be the internal auditors. And you can list as many people as you want, you know, you can list the whole company if, if, if this is, uh, uh, if, if you have uh, enough time to uh, do that. But for example, let's list down first, first step to list down all the potential internal auditors. 
from here let's just put all the skills and knowledge that is needed for these auditors and you can just evaluate first thing is to evaluate what they have at the moment and after that maybe you will already have two potential auditors which could be enough for you but if you do not have any auditors you can say okay let's perform some training for all of this personnel and we can find some external training and ask the trainers can they work on the skills to on the knowledge and, and etc so this could be your first step and your second step in developing the internal audit uh, team competencies okay uh dominique uh, what training would you recommend to become skilled lead internal auditor well the the training on tuesday is perfect uh, yes it's perfect because you have all the needed information there okay tracy in small companies there's usually only one person that handles all of the qa and food safety program what do you do uh in regards to internal audits yeah i think i already explained because this is very often uh and problem but if you have a small team and a small company then you can um uh, and practically, if you have a small team, they all know the processes, you know, and then independence is just not happening. So in these cases, you can pay someone externally to perform the internal audit. This could be also some trained auditor, uh, but this auditor uh, shouldn't be from your uh, certification body. It could be some uh, other person. Uh, and also it shouldn't be the consultant because consultant already consult you about the uh, things you are doing in your company. So there is, again, no independence. So you should decide about some other person, you know, and you can pay for it. Or as I explained, maybe you have a colleague with a similar competencies in other company and then you exchange. You perform in their company audit and they perform in your company audit. You just retrain each other. It could be also a solution. Why okay. not? Thank you. Uh, Shardine, uh, how do you get top management to buy into the importance of instituting an internal audit team? Currently, only one member of the QA department is responsible for conducting SQF internal audits. Uh, if if uh, top management is not understanding the importance of the uh, internal audit, then uh, actually, um, I'm sorry, this top management uh, does not have really high food safety culture. Yeah. And, and then this uh, should be found out by your SQF auditor and your SQF auditor should, if I'm on his place, if I found out, I would give the non-conformity on the top management uh, and the support for the food safety system. And I think that for next year, they would very gladly uh, build a food safety team and or uh, internal auditor team. Yeah, if they're not supplying the adequate, providing the adequate resources, then that's not good. Yeah, uh, it's not good because in every of these standards, you have the first requirement is actually that a top management responsibility and top management responsibility is to define a part of budget for the food safety management system. And in this food safety management system is your internal auditor. Yeah. Okay. Nita, uh, lead auditor training, any recommendations of where you can go? Obviously, the one next week is uh, to train as an internal auditor, not a lead yes, auditor. Yes, it's uh, internal auditor. But to get the lead, lead auditor training, you need to go, for example, to some certification bodies. And they... Uh, and. I think that for lead auditor, you will need to have the training on site because you will have some exercises, you will have some uh, tests, you know, you will have some simulation of the situations of the conversation with the interviews, etc. And you need that your lead auditor training is also accredited. Okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, Joburn, can we use the basic principles of auditing personal attributes or both as criteria in assessing the performance of internal auditors? You can use both. You can use both. You can list them in the matrix and you can use both, of course. Okay, uh, question from Tracy. We have a total of 10 people that work in our warehouse. I'm the only one in there that has the knowledge and responsibility of the food safety program. Okay, Tracy. 
the same as we already talked about small organizations yeah yeah i think we already answered that question okay monica any tool you can recommend uh, uh, to understand more about internal audits? Uh, well, actually, a tool that you can use for the performing of the internal audit, you can find a lot of tools. You know, you have the tools of like uh, iAuditor. This is the application. I think it's on, um, you can find it on the, on the App Store. It's iAuditor. Uh, and also you can find uh, more from food. This is the uh, also the software tool, etc. So these are all the tools through which you can build up uh, your um, internal audit process. Okay. Uh, frequency. Uh, Ali's asking about the frequency of internal auditor training. I would do the training for internal auditors. Uh, every time before the internal audit is performed every time okay uh venita if a site is certified against fsc 22000 okay simon i see that you you left the room for the second i hope that you are back uh so if site is certified against FSSC, what qualification do internal auditors require to have? For first thing is that uh, you build up on the uh, competencies that we talked about, and then qualification would mean, for example, that you have an auditor that that worked in your organization under FSSC uh, certification for, let's say, at least two years, so that understands the food safety management system that you built in. And also you can add, for example, that uh, these internal auditors need to have specific training about the requirements of the FSSC version 5.1 okay. before uh, the internal audit. Right. Vlad, uh, because I, it, I went out and come back, it's cleared all the questions, so I can't see them. Uh -huh, okay, okay. I will try to find where yeah, you, you it, stopped. It wasn't too far down, maybe five or six uh, questions down. Okay. So so I don't know how to broad, uh -huh, broadcast. Okay. Uh -huh. there, okay. So uh, I'm a BRC lead auditor certifier. Shall I train my colleagues and certify as internal auditor for FSC? Yeah, why not? perfect that's perfect to train train them and use that uh, as uh, internal knowledge transfer yeah perfect okay we have um here the question from ali jamal what are the other trainings for non-technical people from other departments for example finance and hr to be as internal auditors food safety internal auditors of course, you can build a specific trainings for the uh, procedures that you have. So, for example, finance and HR, maybe uh, they do not understand the production process or they don't understand something that is done in a laboratory. But you can train them on your work instruction, what they need to look for, and on your procedures, what they need to look for when they are auditing your production process or uh, monitoring processes. And then you train them on that, and then you send them to, to, to audit that. Additionally, how you can help them is that you develop a checklist, for example, with predefined questions that they can ask, and you understand to them what are the answers that they can expect from, from there. And that's it. You know, that's the easiest way. That's the easiest way how you can do it. So let's go next. Uh, I have a question from Amol. What what will max frequency of conducting internal audit? Uh, what what will max frequency of conducting internal audit? I'm not sure that I understand the question. Yeah, I think is are they saying how big a gap can you leave between each internal audit? You well, know. it depends. It depends from the results of the internal audit. If you have a lot of bad results, then you need to implement some corrective actions, for example, in the next month. And then I would recommend that you perform it in three months from the first internal audit after corrective actions are implemented just to verify that all is implemented. 
But if everything is good and you don't have any issues, any problems, then you can plan it even to do it once per year. So it's not a, it's not a big, big an issue. Uh, so let's see here the question from John uh, or Jean-Paul. Uh, is it possible the internal auditors may come uh, from either a TSCCP or VASIP team, but will focus for food safety only? Yes, it's possible. Only keep keep in mind about the independence from the audited processes. It's it's not a problem. Uh, so we have uh, Hector saying, is there a checklist of competencies, skills to evaluate potential internal auditors? No, Hector. Actually, I'm not aware of the checklist, but practically you can make it by yourself. You just go to ISO 19011 or slides that uh, will be provided uh, after this training or already are provided. And then you just, you know, use the competences there and build your own checklist. It is, I think it is very easy technically to be done. Yeah. It's like 10 minutes of work. Okay. So we have Austin, what documents do internal auditor need to have before conducting an internal audit? Well, actually the checklist would be the best. Of course, the audit plan, where you plan the audit, you have the time, who will be the interviews, et cetera. Uh, but uh, additionally to the audit plan, you should have maybe a checklist prepared for the internal auditors to make them easier to perform the, the audit, to not forget any of the requirements that they need to check, etc. And these checklists could be very helpful if you uh, spend some time in making them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is not. This are not the question. Uh, is the auditor training important for the student? If your student is internal auditor, then you should train them, but uh, you will need a lot more training <laughs> for them because of the experience. You need also the experience uh, in uh, production, in the processes, in, in uh, management, etc. Okay, I've got these now. So a question okay. uh, from Kendra. It's not specific to auditing, but how can we explain to top management uh, not supporting, that it's important to implement SQF in production process? Again, top management... I'm sorry, but but if top management just wants the certificate, then uh, you know because of selling the product to some market, then this is a big issue. Because if they get the certificate, it is there is a potential that your customer will come to supplier audit, uh, and then you know you will be in problem if they are not doing what they uh, said that they will do. So th th this is like very very high risk and you should explain to top management that you are getting in the risk of that but on the other side you're getting into a risk for um for you know producing the products that are not safe and then you will have lots of issues like uh, closing the company you know yeah. we had we had one issue with uh, baby food just one issue and this company does not exist anymore yeah uh, and also a famous one is the Peanut Corporation of America, where yeah, the yeah. company owners uh, were complicit in covering up uh, results and food safety issues, and people got ill. I think even died, and they went to prison. So yes, dig so out, I, dig out I, something. I, yeah, leave leave print some things off the internet related to big recalls and and things like that, and leave them lying about. <laughs> Yeah, on the other side, all the standards, like for example, IFS uh, and FSCC, I think maybe FSQF also implemented the unannounced audits, yeah. you know, and they also inter implemented the um, this, uh, how they call it, uh, integrity blower? programs. No, no, integrity programs. Oh, okay. And this integrity programs is actually really, uh, really tough because it could happen that someone from the certification scheme owners are coming and checking not just the company but they are also checking the auditor they are also checking the certification body and it could happen and it happened already that company loses the certificate 
the certification body loses the certificate and the auditor is not able to perform any more audits. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really play with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bao Saheb, uh, is it mandatory for the food safety team leader to have lead artisan training on FSSC if the first food safety team leader is already holding the BRC lead artisan certificate with eight years of food safety knowledge? Dear Pavar, if you have eight years of knowledge in this, then you shouldn't ask this question. Sorry, I will not answer it to you. <laughs> because if you are already BRC lead auditor, then of course that you can be your uh, you can be uh, internal auditor, lead auditor. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Abdul, what is the limitation of internal auditors? Limitation. I don't know what you think, Abdul. Maybe you think about limitation and ask you questions, maybe. Maybe that. Uh, th there are no limitations in asking questions about the processes or the requirements that are audited. Yeah. If you're talking about the number of auditors in the company, yeah. there are no limitations. Okay. Uh, Rick, would a controller of the finance department require much training to audit non-technical or non-production related topics from your uh, FSM? It would be hard to train it, but as I explained in, in some previous questions similar to this, you can have a training, but you can also work on your checklists with the specific questions that they can ask, and you already could have a predefined answers that you expect in these checklists, for example. You know, and and then it would be uh, a little bit easier for them to perform the audit. Okay. Now we've got a little quiz for you because Ab Ab do Ab. Uh, sorry, just let me get rid of that. Abayo me has uh, set you three quick fire questions. So, what's the difference between internal audit and risk management? <laughs> well, well, there's a lot of difference. For example, the risk management is uh, actually part of your uh, internal audit or the internal audit is the part of your risk management because when you are performing the internal audit, you are actually managing some of the risks in your company. Through the internal audit, you are trying to find out what are the risks for your company, for your process, etc. And when you find out the risk and you are solving the risk, all together is called risk management. So okay. this is this is actually the difference. The risk management is bigger than the internal audit. Internal audit is, let's say, a tool for developing your risk management or obtaining your risk management. Okay, we'll give you a tick for that one. Uh, <laughs> Abayome, what is the difference between internal auditors and the HACCP team? Uh, well, internal auditors shouldn't, uh, uh, if they are the members of the HCCP team, then they shouldn't audit the HCCP. Okay. Uh, so so basically the HACCP team develop and implement yes. the HACCP, HCCP team. Yes, HCCP team developed the HCCP. And uh, if you are, or they developed also flow diagrams, specification of products, etc. If you want that your HCCP team are also internal auditors, they cannot audit that. So they, and also their own functions in the company. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Question from Anurag. How much experience is required for the internal auditor in any company? I would say minimally one one year of experience just to understand the processes, but you can always say at least uh, two years is uh, is uh, important that person is in the company to understand, you know, maybe some objectives, uh, visions, missions, etc. Yeah. Uh, good question to me. Is it acceptable to have an internal auditor based on their experience and training without actual studies in the field? So uh, somebody with a lot of knowledge, but not actually studied. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Maybe you could have, for example, the persons that are, um, you know, specified in ISO 9001, and you want them to, and they have experience and training in that, and you want them to audit your uh, processes in food safety management 
you know and then yes of course they can audit that uh, but uh, you can just uh, develop some small training inside just for specific procedures and and uh, you know standard requirements of your company food safety company okay uh ali can we conduct unannounced audits as part of our internal audit program yes but it's not defined anywhere actually i think it's not uh, it would be your internal requirement internal requirement because you know when you say i want to audit something unannounced then it looks like inspection and then people got frightened and you often would not get the needed information you know uh, on the other hand unannounced audit is good if you have a multi-site you know you are producing on several sites or your company that is working internationally then you have your internal audit team for example uh we work in i don't know i don't know for example in egypt in turkey and uh, also in uh, in serbia and then we say okay we will do an unannounced audit in turkey for example yeah so this could happen but it depends from your uh internal way of doing things okay uh Fawa, what is the role of risk assessment in the internal audits yeah this is very important because if you have a company that is uh that is having a lots of problems regarding the processes that is having a lots of compliance for example coming from the uh, customer that is having maybe that had uh, already some recall etc then you should evaluate your risk as very high risk for your processes and you should perform uh, your internal auditors more often uh, again when you look at the risk assessment if you are performing your internal auditors one internal audit one once per year and you find out like 50 non-conformities this could mean that uh, in other months or uh, other periods you have a, a lot more com non-conformities you know and then you should really perform maybe more often non um, internal audits you know like uh, uh, once in three months etc or you can do some other things like uh, fssc defined you have internal audits but you have uh, prp verifications which you can perform like every month or ifs said you have uh, internal audits you can perform it once per year but then you define the factory inspection that you perform for example every month it is a shorter but you keep uh, uh keep it under control it depends from your risk what you will evaluate or what you will see in your company if it's the company who had the certified standard for 10 years you don't have any issues uh, you are not changing every month's uh, equipment or developing new products. Your suppliers are there for last five years, no changes of suppliers, no crisis situation, then once per year it's okay. Okay, very good. Uh, long question from Rez. I think this is more general about training. New, uh, in summary, new to food safety, uh, what training would you recommend, you know, as a get a better understanding of food safety systems etc uh, well actually ifsqn is in the middle of developing the specific trainings for exactly the persons like you are but we will announce it uh so we will announce it so wait for it uh constantin actually uh, if you need to understand i would start at the moment i would start from food safety fridays they are free uh you have one training per week one hour and you can just you know go into it to, to try and understand it and a lots of reading and uh, i would look at the paid trainings at least to have two or three per year just to you know understand something uh, even more and slowly build up your knowledge you don't have to know everything in one year but you you can say to yourself I want to build my knowledge in next three years, and after three years, I will be just uh, on the right spot. Yeah, so you've heard it here first, uh, IFSQN Academy, yeah. so there'll be like a stepped program for individuals to go through 
uh, from basic to uh, advanced. So Austin, uh, you made mention of a checklist as a new internal auditor. How do I develop the checklist needed and what are the things? Well, actually, Austin, I think that uh, maybe the best solution would be to go on a Tony trainings because yeah. you, over there you are talking about checklist and Tony is also showing you the, the checklist for the internal yeah. trainings. Yeah. So th this could be also have helpful for you. I, I think uh, definitely, yeah. yeah it would definitely, be. because th this uh, he really talks about that, yeah. Okay, is two hours enough for an internal audit? Eves is asking. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's not enough. So you should you should perform the internal audit, let's say, in a time as your external audit is done. For example, if your external audit for SQF is done in two days, your internal audit should last at least two days. So you can build on that. If you have HCCP audit that lasts, let's say, eight hours, then it should be sufficient that you perform it in eight hours. In two hours, I cannot, uh, or it can be performed in two hours if you have uh, a lots of internal auditors, you know, and then uh, every auditor has two hours to audit uh, each specific topic and you have departments, etc. And then let's say I have 50 auditors, two, two hours per audit, it's 100 hours. Okay, uh, Ab Abayomi has invited you. He said, can he invite you to conduct an internal audit at his co company? Yes, you can. Whether you'll go or not is a different matter, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I would go, I would go. It, okay. It's not a problem. Look, um, I think we've run quite a bit over. Uh, I can't see any more questions there. It might be another question. Uh, what's the difference between ISO and Codex? Uh, uh, Codex, if you talk about ISO 22000, then Codex is a part of ISO 22000, actually. HCCP is the part of ISO 22000. Okay, Biomi said, what should I do now? Because my internal auditors are part of the HACCP team. Guess get some more internal auditors, yeah? Yeah. Okay, and another question from Arcadio. We've been trained by our corporate QA on internal audit, but these are not documented and I don't have any certificates. I am lead auditor and auditing different Nestle plants and suppliers for many years. Am I recognized as an internal auditor? Yes, and uh, Arcadio, you develop your own certificate internally. That's it. You develop it by your company. You call it your own confirmation. You can call it confirmation. And uh, if you have... If you have the system in your company, you should have the record of the training, your record of the training. This is the form of the training where you have the uh, trainer signed in, the date, the time, the topic, and also the participant signed in. So this should be enough um, to, to show that you are trained as an internal auditor. This should be enough. The record or you can develop your own um, uh your own uh, something like internal certificate or something like that okay and when we're talking about certificates now i've loaded the certificate in the sidebar so there we go so thank you very much vladimir perfect no, another great webinar thank you all again for listening and uh, for for your questions i i really like when you say put a lot of questions and and we can discuss a little bit and uh, yeah and we've got a training coming up soon uh in april uh, allergy yes yes we are going to talk about the allergy management it is a very important topic especially now when hccp 2020 actually added the uh, requirement in the uh, Codex Alimentarius regarding the uh, evaluation of allergens as uh, some potential hazards of cross-contamination, etc. Uh, this is very important rising topic for all the food producers. And uh, actually, on the, till the end of the April, we are going to have this training. And uh, I know that you will share it uh, through the emails and everything. So people people will have the information okay very frustrating keep going away sorry about that uh just <laughs> to say that in the follow-up email we'll send 
shortly the recording, the slide certificate, but I'll also add in next Tuesday's uh, internal audit training and uh, Vladimir's uh, allergen training that's coming up in April. So you can have all that in the follow-up email. So thanks very much, everyone, for attending. Uh, it's great. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. And we'll see also, you have week. a nice weekend. Enjoy and uh, go to Tony webinar and see you at the end of the April also for the allergen management. Cheers, Bye. Everyone. Take care. Bye.